You have before you today what we consider the most odious of the segregation laws and the slavery laws. And our view of this law, and we hope to clearly show, is that this is a slavery law. Actually, one simple issue. And the issue is, may a state proscribe a marriage between two adult consenting individuals because of their race? Can a white person marry a not-white person? That was the question being put before the court in the case that we're going to be talking about today of Loving v. Virginia. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I hope you're doing well. I don't know about where you are, but it is hotter than the Power Rangers in 1993 outside. So, hopefully you're doing a little better than I am. Today's case is actually going to be the next in the series of privacy-related cases that we've been talking about. Uh, previously looking at things like Griswold and Eisenstadt. If you have not seen those cases before, I'm going to go ahead and drop a link for you here to the Eisenstadt case, which is the one before this. I do recommend you go back and take a look at those just so that you have kind of an idea of the framework for this particular case and similarly the cases that will be coming forward in this series. They tend to build on one another. So as always, if you happen to enjoy the channel, do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button. And if you like this video, go ahead and give that like button a little tickle till it turns blue. And there is that bell over there, the notification bell, if you want to get notified of when I post, go ahead and give that a hit as well. I'm aiming for a couple of times a week, but with work, we'll see how it goes. So with all of that out of the way, let's take a look and see just what happened in Loving v. Virginia. To help set the stage for the actual facts of this case, a little bit of history is going to be useful. Obviously, this case is taking place in the Commonwealth of Virginia, the South, back in the 50s, early 60s, so Jim Crow era. Now, for our purposes, the case relates to anti-miscegenation laws, or um, anti-interracial marrying laws. Now, Virginia, at the time this decision was made, was still one of 16 states that had these laws on the books. Interestingly, the prevention of interracial relationships, particularly between white people and not white people, and that was often the distinction, um, go back to the colonial period. But the laws that we're going to be talking about in this particular case are actually stemming from the sort of nativist movement that the United States went through in the 1920s specifically the Racial Integrity Act of 1924. And it's within this context that the individuals of this case grew up, met, and this case arose. And in that particular instance, it began in 1958. So Mildred Jetter was a black woman, and Richard Loving was a white man. They met, they fell in love, and they wanted to get married. But they lived in Virginia and that was a no-go. So what they did is they hop, skipped, and jumped over the river and went to the District of Columbia. Now, D.C. allowed for interracial marriage. So they went and they got married in D.C. And then they went back to Virginia, to Carolyn County, to live. In doing so, the authorities were less than impressed and arrested both of them. And they arrested them on two separate charges. One violating the anti-miscegenation law, and two, just to rub a little bit of insult and injury, the second charge was leaving the state to evade the law. So here, because they went to D.C. to get married where it was legal, they broke the law in Virginia. And to the surprise of, I'm sure, absolutely no one listening, both were convicted on both charges in January of 1959 and given a one-year prison sentence. Now, the judge, being magnanimous, decided to suspend that sentence or not send them to jail, but in doing so, he ordered that they would be basically on probation for 25 years, and they had to leave the Commonwealth of Virginia, and they were not allowed to return together, as in both of them at once, to the Commonwealth in those 25 years. Basically, he banished them. And in doing so, the judge actually put down his basic reasoning as to why. 
um, a large steaming pile of nonsense, including phrases like Almighty God created the races white, black, yellow, Malay, and red, and he placed them on separate continents. And but for the interference with his arrangement, there would be no cause for such marriage. That he separated the races showed that he did not intend for the races to mix. So enlightened. Um, at least he was honest. Makes life a little bit easier for the rest of us to spot the moron. And yes, I'm being a little snippy, but forgive me, this case tends to make me a bit catty. In order to comply with this particular order, they moved to D.C., but in November of 1963, they filed suit in the state court attempting to vacate the judgment, and they based that request in the 14th Amendment, specifically the Equal Protection Clause, which we've talked about before. Now, <laughs> justice tends to move a little on the slow side, but for them it moved even a little bit slower, and they were ignored, and they were ignored, and they were ignored. And so they said, screw you, and they filed suit in the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of Virginia, then in federal court instead of state, and they did that in October of 1964. So just shy of a year after their original suit in the state court. When they finally got to the actual hearing on this, the court upheld all of the conviction. The court upheld the anti-miscegenation laws, they upheld the conviction, the suspension, everything. And so the Lovings appealed again, and it ended up at the Supreme Court. And that is how we get this case today, which was heard in 1967. In reviewing the paperwork, the court determined that they needed to figure out whether or not a statute preventing interracial marriage where race is the sole basis for the denial is going to violate equal protection under the law. That's the question before this court. The Commonwealth of Virginia had put forward a rather interesting argument, and they were saying that it wasn't an equal protection violation to have anti-miscegenation laws on the books, because if you violated it, they punished black and white people the same. There was no difference in the punishment, therefore there was no equal protection claim. The court shot that one down like a drunk man at a bar, saying that the entire purpose of the Equal Protection Clause is to remove all official state sources of invidious racial discrimination. And the Equal Protection Clause requires consideration of whether a classification being drawn by a statute constitutes that arbitrary and invidious discrimination. In fact, if any state wanted to uphold such a law, they had to be able to show that the classification, in this case race, was necessary to the accomplishment of some permissible state objective. And that objective had to be independent of the racial discrimination itself. In the case of the Lovings, the court looked at the circumstances and said, this is absurd. The There was obviously, facially, no legitimate reason for the classification and the ban. Insofar as the ban was to prevent white people from marrying not white people, it was, in effect, plainly an attempt at continuing white supremacy in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Which makes a fair bit of sense if you think about what the judge had to say earlier regarding the mixing of the races and other nonsense where race is the sole reason to restrict marriage, which, as we've discussed before, is considered a fundamental privacy aspect of human life, the court found that using that classification to deny someone access to marriage is a violation of equal protection under the 14th Amendment. But they weren't done, because why not show up to court and get a two-for-one? They said that it was also a violation of due process under the 14th Amendment. As I said before, marriage is considered basic civil right of mankind. And to deny them that basic right because of something like race is so subversive to that principle of equality that rests at the heart of the 14th Amendment that to deprive one citizen of that right because of his skin color is in effect to deprive all of the state's citizens of liberty without due process. And so at the end of the day, 
the court struck down the Virginia laws denying the ability to marry cross-racially on both due process and equal protection grounds. And because it's the Supreme Court and they're tying it to the constitutional protection, it stripped away the ability of all states in the country to deny citizens access to marriage across racial lines. So if that's the case, this is one of those times I like to kind of look at what happened after. Having won their case, Mildred and Richard went back to Carolyn County, Virginia, where he built her a house. Uh, together, they had three children and lived quite happily, it seems, until unfortunately Richard died in June of 1975, having been struck by a drunk driver. Mildred was also in the car in that accident and lost her right eye. However, she survived and lived a fairly long life until she died of pneumonia in May of 2008. So that's Loving v. Virginia. I hope everyone enjoyed the particular case. Go ahead and reach out into the comment section below and let me know what you think of this particular court decision. Until we talk again, I hope everyone stays safe and has a good one.